Hey guys and girls, in this video I'm going to be um, unboxing the Synology Disk Station DS720 Plus because this is a really cool bit of kit, it's got 4 core CPU with AES NI support uh, supports M.2 NVMe SSD as system cache uh, two times LANs with link aggregation, we're going to be covering that in this video um, and expandable storage and RAM, so absolutely can't wait to get my hands on this, let's get it unboxed so um, open it up, we can see that the quick start guide is there straight away. Um, so we can have a look at this uh, just to get going. So if you haven't used a disk station before by Synology, always uh, give the quick start guide a quick read through. So opening the back box, we have got the power box or power block. We've got um, RJ45 network cables. Uh, there's two of those in there. Um, oh, a little set of keys. Another, yeah, there's definitely two network cables in there, which is nice. We've got a little set of screws. This will be for the uh, 2.5 inch drives. If you want to put 2.5 drives in there. So let's get this out the wrapping and take a, a little bit of a closer look at it. So I like how these are. These are quite compact. I do, I do like that. Um, very easy to just have around the, the the office or the home. So really nice and black. Really liking that. And we can uh, we'll check out the the front of this. So that look at that. That's that's super super nice. So we've got um, obviously the locks, the USB, the power button. We've got the nice Synology logo, status lights on the front. Um, it's just a really nice bit of kit. Um, just having a quick look at the, the quick start guide and that's just showing you that it can take um, the 3.5 and the 2.5 hard drives. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll get this. Uh, basically, I'm going to migrate my data from my DS220J. So and that's the main sort of focus is to see how well it sort of migrates over from a, an older disk station to a newer one. So one of the things I hate is having to try to juggle data and backup data before you you switch over um, a NAS. So the back's quite nice. You know, you've got two uh, two Ethernet ports. Um, you know, the power socket. You've got um, just everything you would expect to find on there, which is really really nice. Um, so yeah. So um, sorry, you're gonna have to excuse the mess in the office. I am. Uh, putting a new workshop out the back, so um, basically trying to uh, sort some stuff out and uh, wanted to get this video up. So yeah, so um, on the front, they just uh, the drive just uh, pull out, pull it up, slide it out. Okay, and then yeah, that's that's it really. And inside, you've got the the standard SATA connectors that you can see, um, but also you've got the memory expansion slot to expand your memory just there um, which I'm just pointing to you now so you can see it the SSDs are on the box um, so that'll be interesting to get an SSD in that at some point um, I'm still waiting for it to arrive which is a shame uh, but I'm hoping that will significantly improve performance um, so we'll give that a go so let's grab the uh, the white Synology DS220J and this has been really good this is a really nice little um, entry level NAS so if you're not quite ready to step up to the DS720 plus have a look at this one um, I did find it struggled a little bit with streaming at certain media um, purely purely because it doesn't really have hardware acceleration and the CPU isn't as strong as the DS720 plus but you know right so we're just I'm just going to speed through now and just get these uh, these hard drives out of the older one. So as you can see on the the uh, the D sorry the DS two twenty J you do have to unscrew um, everything to get the drives out. Whereas on the DS seven twenty plus it is much more plug and play, um, which I really do like. So just those drive bays at the front on the new one just slide in and out. Um, so I did get, I did actually confuse myself putting these drives in. So um, stupidly, I'm just because I, because I, my other my PC case, I'm just used to slotting things in. 
And I didn't realize there was two actual tabs at the side. My fault for not reading the quick start guide properly. Um, but there are, on these on these bays, there are little um, clamps that you can take on and off. And uh, I just didn't see it. I didn't. It just slipped slipped by, and you know, just caused that little bit of uh, little bit of issue. But um, I quickly do spot it and resolve it. So um, do give a once over properly to the quick start guide. It will help you a lot. Um, I'm also just having a look to see where the the little screws go on the bottom if it was a 2.5 but you can see there that little bit that's like popped off that i haven't noticed right there is um just the clamp that holds the hard drive in and um what can i say you know silly mistake see there it is it popped out ah oh. and then i realize i'm kind of realized no i didn't realize at all <laughs> so then um i'm like no it's not going in um and then i'm like this can't be right what's going on what am i doing wrong so then i realized that actually there are these little clamps at the side um that you just literally have to uh line up with the screw holes and that's it's like a screwless um screwless fit basically so you can see these just literally uh pivot in just line up the little slots with the screw holes pop it in firmly down make sure they're in nice and securely and then your drive will just slide in, clip in and lock. Okay, so I've hooked it all up. We're powered on and um, I've gone to HTTP find.synology.com in my browser. And that's just searching my network for the disk station. Make sure you give it some time to power on. So we found the Synology NAS. Gives you all the MAC address details and stuff. Click next, accept the agreements once you've read them. And then we can proceed to hopefully do the migration. So it should know that the drives have come from a previous disk station. And it does, which it says welcome back and you want to migrate. So I'm gonna click yes to migrate. Um, and hopefully we won't have to do all the copying of our backed up data onto the new Synology. It'll just be there. That would be beautiful, wouldn't it? So uh, let's click migrate and see what happens. So it gives you a few options. I'm just going with the top option just to, to keep settings, keep apps, keep data. Um, you know, you can just select. There are some other options. Read through really carefully. Pick the option that's right for you. I'm not going to tell you which option to pick. That's got to be your choice based on your needs. Okay. I take no responsibility for your data. Make sure everything's backed up. So click next. And then it says, do you want to install the latest... Um, the latest manager which we do so i'm just clicking yes and that will install um the 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 disk station manager okay so that will take a little bit of time it will then ask you to reset your your nas okay that will take about 10 minutes but we're going to skip that because we can and uh, speed it up for you make sure it restarts and it's fully restarted go back to your nas using your ip and just log in as you would previously so um it will have your old username your password your old admin user will have been transferred and migrated across as well so get logged in using those details okay if you've forgotten those you're going to have to do um a reset on that um just you know I, i'll uh you can just look up how to do that. It's basically just you hold the the reset button in on the back for a few seconds. Once that's done, I did have a few little issues. And that was the fact that loads of the apps did need um, repairing. So I'm not sure why this happened. But the data was there. All my data was there. Everything was fine. But there were a few apps that needed to be repaired. So um, I clicked on, click on repair each one or you can repair all. And that will run through that. Now, there was an issue with MB. And the issue with MB is that the, the version of the SPK that was installed doesn't work on this CPU. And even if you try using the URL to, to get the package, it wasn't working. So there is a fix for that. And I'll talk you through that fix real quick now, because I think it is important if you are an MB user um, to be able to fix that. So it's pretty straightforward and it only takes a few minutes. So what we need to do is to, to fix MB, we're gonna have to go over to the, the MB website for and the support page for Synology um, to be able to re-download um, the SPK 
and do a manual install so we're over here on the mb website we're just going to um, download the 64-bit uh, version for, for Synology and hopefully that, that resolves everything. So you just download that and then once it's downloaded, it will download to your computer. Go back in um, to the package manager and just in the top right, you'll see manual install. Click browse, browse to where you put the SPK and then you're just going to click on that and then just follow the instructions click open um, follow through with everything you need to do um, to set up your MB if you're not sure how to set up MB check out my other video for the DS 220J but just remember on this one which is the DS 720 plus we're doing a manual install we are not using the URL to grab the package okay so once that's done you can see that everything installed fine and is perfect okay so there's no repair issues MB is working fine we are good to go so let's just talk about link aggregation so this is a really cool feature on the back of your NAS you will have noticed there are two ethernet ports plug both ethernet cables in hook them up to your network and then we're going to come over into control panel network and we're going to go to network interfaces and you'll see there are two LAN cards click create create bond and click the top option adaptive okay you might want some of the other options but I'm just going for the top one and what this does is when multiple devices are connecting to your NAS, it will load balance. It will literally balance out the traffic. So if three people in your household are watching Emmy on different TVs, um, it's going to try to compensate and make it much, much better for you, which means uh, less buffering and less connection issues and things like that. So everybody's happy. So give that a go. That's, you know, that is really, it is a really useful thing. Just follow the steps on screen as I'm doing now. It will create the bond, restart the NAS, let the NAS fully restart, uh, log back in, and everything's good to go. So I hope this has been really helpful to you. I absolutely love this disk station. And in the next video, we're going to be covering um, how to do some collaboration with Drive and some other things. So remember to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out and tick the bell.